folks, I'm Tom Bassel and welcome to Week in Review. This is a video where we here on the Dice Tower go back and take a look at the videos we did over the past week. Now I should mention, this came up last week, that in these reviews, that in these numerical ratings, these are very subjective ratings. I just give a game a number based on how much I like the game, not on how good I think the game is overall to the public. That's a very objective thing. I don't care about that. This is just what I think about the game. It's also hard to condense these down into a single number. So so for that purpose, I do recommend watching the full reviews of the game so you can see why we thought what we did, which is more important than a singular number. That being said, singular numbers incoming, and if you do want to see the full reviews, links are in the description below. Let's get started. Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and here's what I reviewed last week. I reviewed Fuji. This I rate a 6 out of 10. It's a cooperative dice-driven game in which you cannot clearly communicate with your neighbors, but you are trying to advance on the board and, and get away basically from an erupting volcano. It's one of those games that employs this sort of nebulous, you can say things, but not specifics. I tend to dislike those sorts of rules. The whole package is very attractive, but it's a very inferior infuriating, at the very least frustrating uh, idea, and it does not feel like the kind of cooperation I want to be engaging in when I play these kinds of games, so I was a little bit disappointed by it. Again, definitely a looker, but not an experience I got excited about. I found it very uh, much tied, it tied my hands behind my back. I reviewed Victorian Masterminds. I rate this an 8 out of 10. It's a gorgeously produced game in which you are sending out your workers and then triggering them in order to take over the world. You are, a, you know, a mad scientist. I really like the theme here. I like the way the game looks a lot. Uh, the replayability is a little bit lower than I would like, but I still find it to be a very engaging game that does a lot in about 45, 60 minutes. It feels like a bigger experience than it is and it, it puts you in that world in a really neat way. So I liked it very much. And then I reviewed Pandoria. This is a tile laying game and I rate this a nine out of 10. Really was fascinated by this. It, it kind of feels like twisty, upside down Carcassonne with then cards on top of that. You are playing cards that have spells or buildings. Buildings stick around and give you continuous powers, and you are developing the board. It's got a really cool idea in which if you enclose someone else's piece on the board, their scoring pawn, they are booted from the board and will not score anymore. The scoring is clever and interesting. You got resource management. I like the look of everything. Yeah, it's a fantasy game, so that's a little bit sort of generic. But overall, I found it to be a fantastic tile laying game. Really liked it. And that's it for me. I will see you all on the next one. Hey folks, welcome back to another Weekend Review. I did three videos for you this week. The first one was a review for Brains Family, Bergen and Draken. Now that is, Brains Family is the series of the, it's the name of the series that the game comes in. And Bergen and Dragon, Castles and Dragons, are, is the actual name of the game. This one is a family weight game from Reiner Knizia, put out by Pegasus Spiel. And it is uh, basically who can put together the puzzle first. Uh, so it's a real-time tile laying game. Think Carcassonne for how the tiles are played. You have to match size and all this other kind of stuff. And there's other rules there, but you can watch the review. Gave it a 7 out of 10. Really enjoyed it and uh, for what it was. And uh, I, think it's, I think it's good. So uh, that was that. Then I also did a review for Stone Age Anniversary. Now this is the anniversary that it's somewhat pricey, but it is really good. It puts everything that you could probably want at this point from Stone Age into one special box with a few with a couple variants and with a couple mini expansions as well. So I really think it's a great um, product. Whether or not you want to afford it, that's up to you, but I gave it a 9 out of 10 because I already enjoyed Stone Age and this made me enjoy it just a little bit more. So that's that. Then I also did a um, first impressions video of four games that we played on Testing Tuesday last week. Um, that was A Pleasant Journey to Nico, Narabi, Zakin, and Clickbait. So you can go check out that first impressions video for my thoughts on those. That's it from me this week. Let's get back to the West of your review. So for me, first of all, several reviews, that several games I didn't think very highly of. Horticulture Master. This is a really pretty game. Looks fantastic. It doesn't even play that badly until you realize the game's pretty much on rails and you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, building the garden. 
Taiwan Formosa, another game that looks really cool. You roll dice, get resources, build cards, and build an engine. The problem is you roll the dice, and whatever you roll, that's the card you buy. Not a lot of choices, which is unfortunate in a game that looks cool. The Festivals, a game in which you're flying around in Indonesia to go to festivals. Three games in a row that I always very impressed with how they looked and the cool themes of them. But with the festivals, you just kind of move and see what happens. It's way too lucky. Heckmex Deluxe. This one I liked a little better. It's a Yahtzee style game, which is okay, but so lucky. I'm just, the deluxe version is definitely better than the regular version of the game, but it's still a game that I could pass by. Dino Dude Ranch. Now, while I might not be the biggest fan of this one, it is an excellent game for, for children uh, where you're basically rolling dice resources and then buying dinosaurs with them and putting them in your ranch. Challenge of the Super Friends. You'll uh, like this, especially if you have nostalgia for the Super Friends cartoon. That's what this game is. It's basically everyone play a card at the same time, reveal it. Highest card might win, depending on what else might happen. Lots of luck and chaos in the game, but it's silly fun. Layers. This is a speed game where you take five different cards, uh, layer cards with holes in them, put them on top of each other in different directions, trying to match something in the middle. If you like a finish the puzzle before other people do, like I do, you will also enjoy this game. Dino Genesis. This is a big dinosaur game. It's basically Jurassic Park, the board game. Simpler than I thought. Uh, a lot of people, uh, so this game is very divisive, I found. Some people love the theming of it. Some people say that it's a rich get richer. I found that the game itself was very fun, very straightforward. I enjoyed it. Dual Powers Revolution 1917 is a two-player uh, game about the 1917 Russian Revolution, which I think is very well done, very simple, very streamlined. Uh, works for me. Uh, Whistle Stop Express. This is uh, the expansion, the Rocky Mountains expansion, which comes really close to being what I call an essential expansion. I liked Whistle Stop Express, but with this expansion, or I'm sorry, just Whistle Stop. I don't know why I keep calling it Whistle Stop Express. Whistle Stop uh, with this uh, expansion gets is just really well done. It, it makes gold a little bit more valuable. I just really like it. First Contact. Now, this is a really intriguing game. I like it a lot. Uh, the, I would probably rank it even higher if I thought I could find more players for it because it's very esoteric where some of the players are aliens, some of the players are humans, and you're trying to teach the other players what your language is and figure it out. Zombie Kids Evolution, best game I played this week for sure. A legacy game for kids that you can play over and over and over again. Really short game, but it changes as the game goes by. I really like the production. The whole thing is fantastic. Also this week, we did our top 10 games that keep getting better. There was a live board game breakfast where we talked about a backseat driver or backseat rules explainer. Um, and there's all sorts of other things that went up this week. I did a, a top 10 victory conditions in games. So there's different videos this week. Check them all out. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching uh, Week in Review on the Dice Tower.